to replace Anastasia with Delisa Japonda. Yes! Yeah! And he is the Britain's Got Talent third place winner, winner? Third place of 2017. Um, and you were also Amanda's goal for us, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. How was that? Oh, that was crazy because I didn't expect it because going in, I know I'm funny. <laughs> but I, I watch people get buzzers, and it's usually something very unbelievable. Yeah. Like, you know, a, a child who can do something no one can dream. do. Or, <laughs> you know, someone who juggles fire. There's something yeah. really weird. But I was like, I just tell me jokes. Yeah. So I didn't expect it. So that, actually, of the experience was the biggest shock. So, at the moment, it's an 18-year comedy career. Oh, but not even long. Wait, long yeah. No, no. So I started comedy in 2001. Oh, really? Oh, no, no, so you're right. That is 18 years. How did you know? Oh, I guess you did the research. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's it. Because in my head, I thought we were starting when I was in the UK. No, but you're right. Yeah. Because I started in Canada, and uh, it wasn't a career, but I was learning how to do it, doing open mics and stuff. And then uh, eventually, I, I think it became my job. So how did comedy come yeah. about? Because I, I think I heard that you, were you into computer science? Were you studying well, computer Well, no, science? I wasn't. I was into writing. Like um, fiction, but you know, I grew up in a very pragmatic kind of household. Yeah. So you don't study the insane thing that might make you broke. You're good at math, you're good at physics, you study computer programming. Right, oh, computer programming. So even though it wasn't what I wanted to do, it was what I was studying because I, I've been hammered in my head, you've got to do the thing that can get you a stable job. Yeah. But yeah, while I was there, always. you know, it was where I realized that, no, I don't want to take this. What made stable. you think comedy then? Well, I just wanted to write fiction. And I used oh, to okay. do open mics where you read stories and poetry. Oh, I don't know if you've ever been to these terrible open mics. <laughs> I've seen some on YouTube, actually. Read and told about the <laughs> So you used to do those. And I used to do those, and I often would be funny. And you enjoyed doing those. And though. I loved doing them funny. And someone who did stand-up comedy saw me doing a funny poem oh, right. and said, you're funny, you should try stand-up. Oh my god! And so I... Thanks to that person then. <laughs> exactly. I went and I did a, a, a stand-up comedy night, uh, like open mic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was great. Oh, that's great. So is it is it a lot of rehearsal of, of your like, set or your gig? Do you do when a lot I of rehearsal started, room? I, when I started, I used to do rehearsal. Now I don't. Really? I don't at all. Where's the ideas come from? So I write every day, right? Do so you? Yes, I write every day and I do uh, a few different kinds of things. So like what I was doing during breakfast is I read the newspaper okay. and I take screenshots of anything that I might be able to turn into uh, something okay. funny. current news obviously is current news. really good to get all the um, And then also I, I kind of just think about my life. <laughs> so it's almost like, it's almost like a about twisted life. diary oh, right. that you look back on the last day and write down interesting conversations which came up or interesting weird things that happened which That's maybe you could yeah. turn into a, a joke um, and then I sort of do those and then I have a few projects which I need to write jokes for so okay. I also do research on them so like I'm doing a museum project uh, oh. so I read about archaeology a bit or I do um, now I don't do all of them every day but I, I kind of dip between yeah. them and like You've got very well rounded knowledge then. Exactly. So and it's sort of just like researching something you don't know about often creates a joke. Yeah. Because yeah, you find out an interesting and fact. Like, seriously? And, yeah. like, really? <laughs> and then you go off on okay. that. So, um, like, right now, I'm trying to write a, a thing about binging. You know, oh, people right. binging. Yeah. It's a weird binge culture. Yeah. Because yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine who told me proudly he'd watched seven episodes of Punisher yesterday. <laughs> and I was just like, this is a weird thing to be proud of. <laughs> That's because you write it. Seven hours of your life. You know what I mean? And so, I, but I don't want to just make fun of him. So then yeah. I'm now reading about such people who are into binging, oh, wow. things about binging, and then something funny will come out. Oh, that's really cool. So it's almost like sometimes your, your show's going to be like your life on stage sort of thing yes. and sort of yes. explain it but just in a, a comedic way. Also I'm not a good actor so it has to be a bit true Yeah. so okay. that I just tell the story as it is and people see the emotions. Okay, but 
when you say you're not a good actor, though, I see loads of comedians and they sort of, you know, use big gestures and they heighten things just for, you know, audience purpose yes. and things. Yes, you can All do that. So I can do that. But what I mean is, like, if I made up a story that was 100% not true, it'd be difficult to. I think, I may be wrong, but I think that I wouldn't deliver it as well. Like, if, yeah, I'm, no, I know if I'm complaining about a girlfriend, they know I actually have beef with this person. Because <laughs> it's come, the genuine emotion is coming You can out. see the anger You can see out. the anger. Or if I'm, you know, uh, but some people, if you're a really good actor, you could just write, a, like, for example, I sometimes write jokes where I'm like, I have to try to sell it to some other comedian because I'm like, oh, you need to have a kid to do this joke. Well, I'm right? saying what you mean. Well, you know, I don't have that, so here you go. Yeah, it's the if joke. I was an actor, a good actor, I could just pretend for the performance yeah. of what I did. No, I and people would believe I did. Well, I feel like because I'm not good at acting, people would would sense it's not real. Yeah, yeah, you've got you've got that edge. So you're actually you're quite well known for your edgy jokes. Have you had it anywhere they've been like the reaction's been a bit strange and you've been like uh, you know you were saying that you yes. if you have shows like one after the other you have time to change. Have you had any reactions where you're like, mm, that's not the best reaction, or maybe that's a bit controversial? Sort of yes, you know, the first thing I would say is that I was an edgy for Britain's Got Talent, which is a pre watershed show which kids are watching. Yeah, exactly. But for a comedy club mm -hmm. or for the UK, I'm not edgy at all. Right? Really? You've got Jimmy Carr, you've got true, Frankie Boyd. True. The UK has got people who legitimately cross the line, right? <laughs> I'm the edgy comic you can watch with your grandmother. I'm not really edgy. I still think you're on the line, though. <laughs> I'm on the line. Like, I'm on the, the line. line. <laughs> I'm very firmly on the line. Okay. And so... Do you I'm, like being on the line? I guess I do. Have you ever like, had a, like, a spark where you're like, oh, could I say that? Or maybe... Um, I always say it anyway. <laughs> but I do have to, I like, you. remodel. Or, or I, okay, I will say this. Sometimes I'll do a joke, which I find is funny. Yep. And then I will find that it's putting people off or people are a little upset by it. And I won't throw away oh, okay. the joke. Yep. But I will try to rewrite it, it yeah, okay, or yeah. introduce it in a new way so okay. they get the point of what I'm saying. Because I actually think if people know what I'm actually trying to say, they'll never be offended. Yeah, I see. Because um, well, I'm not that sort of person. Yeah. So, like, I have one joke where um, it was about an ex-girlfriend right. being with a new person, okay. right? And it was about being heartbroken because she's now doing this stuff with a new partner yeah. that she used to do with oh, me. Okay. Right? So it was like, oh, he took her up a mountain and I, I used to do that. And, and they went on a romantic trip to Ireland and I used to do that. And then yesterday he punched her in the face and I used to, <laughs> I used to do, do that. that. And it was a silly joke, yeah. right? It was a tiny silly joke just based on the surprise yeah. of what I said. But then someone who'd been through domestic violence spoke okay. to me about it and was really upset by it. And I was like, oh, that joke, I wasn't trying to, to no. engage oh, no. that idea. Yeah. But, no, but I, I took what she said on board. So I rewrote the joke into a political joke. Oh, okay. And now it's a joke uh, about uh, a political party, right? And right. I, did it, I did it in... Um, in uh, Kenya, where they, I was like, I feel sorry for the old guys because they used to be in power and they're not in power anymore. So now they're looking at the new president and they're reading the newspaper and they say, Oh, he had a meeting with China. I used to do that. <laughs> oh, he, he had a meeting with China. I used to do that. And then the punchline is, Oh, five million dollars went missing. I used to do that. <laughs> And so it's the same structure, it's the same idea. I see what you mean, you just put it in a different context. Yes. So, so I would clever. do things like that where I realize the joke is actually coming from the structure. So I can change the content to be something less contentious. And it's really nice that even that, that you know, you said that person who like, wrote to you, you've actually taken that on board. Because I'm sure there's quite a few people who have their ropes from me and they're like, no, this is, this is my set, this is how I want to yes. do it. Whereas oh no, but I also think you, you listen to everyone yeah. and you discard some of them. Like someone sent me an angry uh, message for making fun of Katie Hopkins. And <laughs> after that, I was like, well, I think I'm going to keep making fun of So I don't, yeah, I don't say no to everybody. Yeah. I don't say yes to everybody. But like someone being abused and being yeah, hurt by my joke, yeah, I, will, it, I will so. change the joke. And with like current things, with um, like Brexit still and all of that, 
Is has it gone too far now? Can you still make it humorous? Or oh no, no, I think so. I mean, it's a play. I mean, the problem with this is that because it's been in the news every day for two years. Yeah. It gets to the point that it's hard to say something different. Yeah. But at the same time, it is a national obsession. It is something which is spread by a lot of people. So it, there's always an angle that comes in the news quite a lot as yes. well, isn't it? So yes. But it's also the weird thing is though. It doesn't last very long. Like in that, if I do a joke about love, mm. I can tell it for the whole year, right? <laughs> yeah, true. But if I do a joke about what happened with Theresa May in Parliament yesterday, by next week that joke's gone. Right? It's because it's completely changed. It's completely isn't it? yeah. changed. I so it's, it's one yeah. of those things. Like I got some good jokes out of that uh, Jeremy Corbyn stupid woman thing. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was funny for like three days. And then it's and gone. Then people I see what you mean. So where, when people move on. Have you got like a book where you just scrap those ideas now, or do you keep a massive? Yes, I've got a, a, a database. Oh, yeah. I write, I write, I write, a database. Very few Not comedians jokes, do though. this. Very few comedians do this, but I'm like organizing really like <laughs> over. I have my joke, and then I have like all kinds of things, like what, what whether it's G or X rated, or, or or I have how long it is. Mm -hmm. I have uh, whether it works in the UK, whether it works in Africa. I have all sorts of things about the joke. And then one of them will also be if it's topical, right? And if it's topical, I often try to get it uh, filmed or recorded in audio before it runs out. So, for example, I did a joke about the royal wedding, which was really good last year, right? But I knew it's not going to last long, yeah, so, you so I filmed it, yeah. and then it, it, oh, that's it, it exists on my YouTube channel forever. So talking about um, your touring at the moment, aren't you? No, no, no. So I toured last year. I did uh, 80 dates. So I toured from days. February until um, November. Right. And touring is when you're just doing a one-man show okay. in theatre. Was that tiring? No, really. I wish it was still going. Really? Like, oh, you really like, enjoyed like, it? Like people who get like to a certain level, like uh, Sarah Milliken, she can tour for two years. And she, like, yeah. And that to me is the ideal. Really? Like, oh, like I'd love to do like I think she did two hundred shows on the last one. Like I did eighty, and I was like I was still hungry when it was done. <laughs> and I was like no, because I think that's a good length. Because by the end of two years, you've already written the next one, right? So now I've had I finished this one, and then I'm writing the next one right oh, now. Nice. So what I'm doing is it's, it looks like we're in, in the I'm in different cities, but yeah. I'm doing comedy clubs. Oh, okay. And comedy clubs, you do like twenty minute sets, and I'm working the material. That's going to be my next tour. Oh right! So, so you're testing it out. You test it out. You test okay. it out. And um, yeah, so like yesterday, I did two shows, and I tried around four different new jokes. Okay. And uh, I, I'm going to toss one of them, yep. and then I'm going to work on three of them. Have and you got a favorite comedian? That my you've favorite with? comedian? Uh, oh, that I work with. Oh well, either. Okay, my favorite comedian on the planet is probably Chris Rock. And then my favorite comedian I've worked with is Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Have uh, you got anything coming up next? What are you thinking yeah. about? So this year is very busy. So this year I'm doing. So I'm writing my tour, then I'm going to probably tour it from August till December. Okay. I'm uh, doing the next season of my radio show, right. so I'm writing that as well. And then I've got uh, a few things I'm pitching. So there are other things which may happen depending on. They bite. It all depends if some producer likes it. And yeah. even if they like it, if their boss then likes it, then their boss then likes it. Then you're in. <laughs> so all I would say to people is like, uh, you know, YouTube or, or uh, Facebook or wherever. I'm just, if you put in my name, you'll find whatever my, I'm doing like a joke of the week. And I'm oh, doing that's like so that. cool, like quote of the day, joke of the week. Exactly. Oh, that's so, it. So oh, I like that. that. <laughs> if, they, if they want some laughs, they should just go find it. That's so it's all, all on your social media? Yes. I mean, I've got an actual TV. Which is, oh, right. which is out and they can buy it or download it. But then I also have the free content as well. Because, oh, you know, a lot of my fans are like students who are like, I was about to say, think of the uni students. <laughs> You're really funny, but I have no money. Like, Don't worry, the free stuff, the free stuff too. And then when you we get a job, you'll, you'll come, you'll come download the stuff. We'll, we'll get your DVD then. <laughs> but yes. we love the free stuff. Yes. <laughs> So all of Deliso's links will be in the description box below. We hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I mean, I certainly have. You're hilarious, so I'm definitely watching more of your things coming out soon. Excellent. Thank you for having me. And yes, all of the links are below. <laughs> Click on them. Also, this is a very simple...
silly one, but there's a, a, a video of mine which recently got, not viral viral, but like, you know, like, you know, I think it's a hundred thousand people. Have oh, just a hundred thousand. No, 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 but viral, I don't know, viral. Viral. I thought it was viral, but they said if it's not a million, it's not viral. Oh, that's viral right. to me. That's to me. <laughs> to me. But what's funny though is it's about race. So it's in my, okay. it's in my show, it's called this, it's, it's in YouTube, it's called The Scale of Hate. Right. right. Okay. And I would invite you to watch it, but the main reason I want you to is because they're idiots writing very ridiculous comments. Well, and uh, you know, underneath it, and I don't delete them. Right. I just <laughs> wait for my fans to argue with them. So <laughs> all I'm saying is, if you like the show, You're running comments, please go to scale. Okay. Even if you don't watch it, just go to find scale. the idiots and the racists and answer them and tell them. <laughs> They're idiots, okay? I'll be on that tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you've watched any of Deliso's videos and definitely go watch that one. Till next time, see ya! Thank you.